Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honour to be here outside Parliament. Um, I grew up just down the road uh, in a place called Pilton in Muir House. Represent. I started campaigning when I was 11 years old. I grew up in a family where I never seen a mum, a dad, or a relative go out to work. I grew up reading the newspapers telling me that I lived in a council sink estate, telling me that I wasn't good enough, that we were benefit scroungers, and somehow, because of where I happened to be born by my postcode, that I wasn't as good or good enough. I feel a similar pain to when we are judged because of where we come from, and the hate speech and the putrid dog whistle racism that I've watched well-paid elected politicians lie to well-meaning citizens to get a political ideology passed is sickening. <laughs> now, I'm not one for academia generally, but on the way here, I found a quote by the French philosopher Voltaire. Who, oh, boom. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. My mum will be proud of that one. Uh, not Cab Voltaire, Voltaire the philosopher. Uh, who said that when we look for our ideas on civilization, we look at Scotland. And I think when we want to learn about humanity, innovation, bravery, bottom-up decision-making, putting uh, the voice to the voiceless, putting the microphone to the unheard, shining light on those that have lived in darkness. That's what our country and our values have been about. And that's why I've campaigned for months to try and keep the UK and Scotland inside the European Union. Yeah. But more than that, this isn't about just a country. And yes, we're proud that we voted over 60% to remain. This is also about coalitions of peoples wherever we live or come from. One is about generational justice. It's unjust to me as a youth campaigner who spent my life proving people wrong, not because I'm part of an establishment, not because it's good for a business, not because my party leader tells me to or I'm having a crack at being the next prime minister, but it's because I know that Europe and standing shoulder to shoulder with brothers and sisters around the world that's the way to help poor people. That's the way to help those living with disabilities, to help those fighting human rights injustice, to help those who don't grow up with parents, who are tackling mental health struggles. It is those hidden voices that aren't heard in politics. And this rally is about saying, just because Brexit has happened, we're not walking away from progressive coalitions all around the world. And I'd say, especially to the young people, don't accept the media calling us the feral youth that has to be managed, that we don't care about politics, that we don't get involved, that we're only interested in ourselves. Look around at how many young people are here. Stats just came out that over 60% of young people voted, and we think about 70 to 75% voted to remain. So I say to these politicians who are fighting over Prime Ministership, who's in Butte House, who's discussing Article 50s here and there, remember that you don't own this planet. You are looking after it until young people take over and have a say and listen to the 70 odd percent who said we want to stay in some relationship with Europe. Honour that commitment to the next generation. So it's clear to me that young people, those passionate about human rights, those that are progressive, with a party or without, we are the custodians of compassion now. This isn't about Article 50. This isn't about being a 48%. This isn't about being the 45%. This is about being the 100%. Now the vote may look like we have, built, uh, we have burnt down a bridge and putting up a wall. It's our job to make sure that that's not a wall, but that continues to be a bridge for the values and actions we preach. That vote may take us out of the political body that is the EU, but that will not take us out of what the EU embodies. And that is our job to extend a hand, not point a finger. And that's the progressive opportunity we have going forward. Thank you all for coming.